guys, it's Creston here with a layout update, and uh, it's been a while since I did the last one. Uh, the main reason is um, just work and family uh, priorities. But anyway, uh, let's see here. The last time we we um, did an update, it was regarding the um, putting the rock wall on the uh, airport, as you see here. And I talked about uh, that this update we would show uh, how we created those. So. Basically, if you remember, uh, or you want to look back, um, these are the individual pages that we printed out of the rock wall. Uh, this is a photograph, a stretched photograph, which uh, after printing out, we crinkled it, uh, crumpled it up, and then glued it on to the surface to have our rock wall. Now, the original photo uh, is this, um, this one here. If I zoom out, it's a very long photograph. Now, I model Kentucky mainly, and uh, there's lots of rock cuts, especially because Kentucky is known for its uh, very uh, thick layer of limestone, uh, which is why Mammoth Cave is there, the largest cave system in the world. It's cut all through the limestone. But anyway, um, so I wanted to be able to capture these, and so I had some inspiration while I was driving uh, through Kentucky one day on the freeway, uh, that how does the iPhone... Uh, which I have an iPhone 6, how does the iPhone work with panoramic uh, photos, panorama photos? So what I did is I held my camera up uh, to, the, to the window and um, just uh, kept on driving as I pressed the uh, panorama uh, shutter and let it go and it just uh, seems to creep along and gather anything that's happening. As you can see, this is sort of this is a simulated view, but uh, it creates one long image. It is a I think it is a 24 megapixel, uh, image 28 megapixel image, but it seems to be capturing the middle area and stitching it all together with a bunch of individual photos. Is my my best guess, but it does flatten everything out, so it is does not have perspective on what you're shooting as long as you go around the panoramic. There is some cleanup involved uh, with the panoramic uh, method. Well, mainly the only cleanup primarily is uh, in things that don't move at the same speed. For instance, the sky is not moving at the same speed as you're traveling by um, the work wall. And if a car goes by, you can see it uh, causes some interesting <laughs> effects that captures part of the car, but not all of it. So those are just some of the artifacts of this method, but I'm very impressed with how well it does and uh, keeping things straight in line and uh, great detail. The original image happens to be uh, 13,632 by 3,148 tall. So it's a, uh, a great resolution image uh, to use for photo backdrops when printed out uh, and it would work for many different scales uh, depending on what you want to do with it. So here is some of the experimentation or science behind how the iPhone uh, uses the panoramic photo mode to um, take care of distortion. So if you see here, here's the original. Uh, this is a, a, a brick wall uh, at a, a mall near here that I wanted to be able to just uh, illustrate. Um, to get a flat wall that I could indeed, you know, print, cut out, and put on some uh, foam core, something like that type of backdrop. Uh, but because it's a square uh, wall, I thought it would be a good example. So here's the original, just shot uh, from an angle. Um, this is what it looks like when you shoot a panoramic that's standing in one spot. You can see... Um, <laughs> very exaggerated perspective because indeed I'm doing a about a 200 degree uh, rotation to get this but if I get in my car and get at one end hold up the phone put on panorama and as soon as I start to uh, you know it, you don't have to keep a constant speed uh, but uh, you don't want to go too fast to get blur but just like when you rotate to do a panoramic, uh, you want to keep a fairly constant speed. So I think I was going probably 20 miles an hour. And once I got to the beginning of the wall, I pressed the uh, uh, the shutter button, 
and it just like the doing the big rock wall um, it captures it almost like scanning it with a vertical scanner um, right down the wall until you end up with a very flat image uh, it looks like this so it has taken care of a lot of the distortion you can see there are some artifacts uh, with a little cleanup with the clone tool in uh, Photoshop uh, I was able to you know have a clean image so you can see I'll show you zoom in some of the artifacts here the sidewalks weren't sure what to do with their angles uh, let's see here the um, let's see some ghosting because those uh, background things are not moving at the same speed of as the main element which is the the brick wall uh, a little bit of uh, distortion in the brick but overall you know if this is uh, cleaned up a bit and then printed uh, you know it's it's a great background image for my last example this is a uh, hillside um, along the freeway with trees I wanted to use for my by backdrop and um, so by shooting this again with a panoramic view um, as I travel down the freeway uh, again that is probably I would guess a hundred yards from my car and traveling at freeway speeds I was uh, you know it, it does well with keeping the clarity uh, without any uh, motion blur so anyway uh, I did have to clean up I got rid of the cones uh, the traffic uh, barrels, I guess they're called traffic barrels, and then here are some uh, some trees that had some echo in the top because they were a little farther away, and so they did have a different speed as to the main uh, main grouping of trees and the rock. Uh, but a little clone tool, uh, maybe you know, 15, 20 minutes, and I was ready to um, I had to print this uh, because it is a long image. I chose to just uh, put it into InDesign and uh, copy it to about I think it was five different pages and for each page I just slid the image to the next area to have it kind of crop it automatically uh, so that way it was really easy to just uh, give a PDF I was okay with having you know a, a seam every every uh, every 11 inches as I printed it in a horizontal fashion on 8.5 by 11 so for this short uh, uh, spans and knowing I'm going to have a few trees in front of it, uh, I'm fine with having a few seams uh, before I uh, apply it to the wall with with Mod Podge. So there you go. That is what we have, and here's a, a final view of that background on the wall. And uh, thought it turned out real well, especially with the way I had the uh, the grass go right up to it, the tall grass, which I shared in. Uh, Let's see, I think it was uh, Layout Update 3 is how to make that grass. Take care, guys, and we'll be talking.